Hello, today I've got an update on my free quad FPV simulator and I just wanted to show you where we were, where we are now, what I fixed. Call it a bit of a vlog, bit of a devlog and uh, a bit of a hey this is what I've done now. So to explain some of the things I fixed I'm gonna fire up the released uh, sim that I put out on the last update video so I can take you through the problems and what it did look like. So this is the 0.31 alpha version of the sim. So if we take off and just go over here, one of the problems lots of people reported was the shadows here. Can you see the way they flicker? This was uh, actually a known issue on Unity. I I'll take you through a minute exactly what it is and how it was fixed. But also while I'm just orbiting this hoop, you can see the way that hoop moves. It's kind of it keeps jerking like it's almost ghosting in two positions. Now at first I thought this might have been my old iMac which was six years old. I've got a new Mac now. Here's a picture. You'll also notice that the camera is now mounted on a shelf. If you've noticed the angles changed it's because it used to be mounted above the monitor but now the monitor's grown it won't fit so if the angle's a bit weird I apologize. Anyway you can see the shadows there and this really culminates. If I go over to where the trees are you can see those shadows flickering around all over the place and if we venture through the trees we can see that uh, it's it's all dodgy. The, the trees sort of jerk around, the shadows are flickering so it's not a pretty situation. And again I thought this must be down to my old uh, Mac but this is on my new much more powerful up-to-date Mac and it's still a problem. So there's there, those two. The other two problems that uh, one of them I knew about well, there are not many people putting it out actually, it's surprising. If we go over here to our city, aside from the fact that everything's shaking around, you'll notice this building here is levitating uh, above the earth. It's, it just basically wasn't, wasn't placed far enough down. Um, surprisingly, a number of people that didn't point it out, maybe you weren't paying attention. Uh, and there was a little graphical glitch that was kind of annoying people with where one of the roads didn't quite uh, connect properly which is just here you can just see how this road is sort of flickering around you can kind of see the sand through it that's not good anyway let's come out of that now the shadow flickering was a, a really interesting thing because it seemed to be known about in unity and it's to do with the the, the clipping plane when you have a camera you have a, a place where you're going to go from to and things that are before or outside of that plane are sort of clipped so it doesn't have to draw it and Many people reported this sort of problem, especially when moving around an object like we were doing the orbit there. And it seemed to be if you if you have your clipping plane very close, then it causes a flicker. If you move it further out, then the flicker goes. Now the problem being that it, it did work. If I moved the clipping plane further out, the flickering was gone, but also my, all my props had disappeared and anything right up against the quad, um, which was a problem. It, it made me rethink the engine and a couple of people mentioned in the comments about Godot as an engine. Did you try using that? And I had to say I hadn't heard of Godot. But I'd actually gone as far as downloading uh, Unreal Engine and I was thinking about moving everything over to there because it was at a quite early stage. It was only the fact that my old Mac just refused to actually run it when I asked it to and it just said no and, and closed it down again. Uh, but I, I figured out what the problem was. Well, I figured out a workaround at least. So what we're looking at here is a Unity editor and this is where I basically place all my objects and I can I can go ahead and uh, sort of move around the world nice and easy to see what, what's up with things and I can give uh, bits and pieces properties and, and decide what's going on. So what I figured out is that I could have a, uh, a close-up camera and it would look like this and this would be responsible, this window down the bottom, just for the close-up stuff. Uh, and what I then did is I made a camera that would look just far away where the clipping plane was slightly different. You see how that bottom bit is disappeared and the props has disappeared? It was literally that that much made all the difference between the, the shadows flickering. So all I basically did is create two cameras and overlaid them on top of one each other to sort the problem out that way. So here we are in the new version of Sim. This is a 04 Alpha which I'll be releasing at the end of this video. And I'll show you first of all the shadows and the, the other change we made. You can see if we now orbit this hoop, the shadow is nice and still. And you also notice that the hoop 
doesn't jerk about like it was before, looking really weird. Now this is actually because of timing differences. In the Unity engine you've got two things. You've got the main update loop which attempts to run um, every frame as fast as it can and you've got the physics engine loop which runs every 50th of a second. Now if you've got certain things drawing in the main loop very quickly and then other things which are physics entities drawing every 50th of a second you can get out of sync and things look like they're um, they're basically jerking around because they're drawing in between. So if we head over now to the trees you'll see the shadows are properly static which is all good and we can basically go nicely around the tree there's no jerkiness on the uh, trunks or shadows or anything and that looks good. Similarly if we go over to the city now we can see that this building is now firmly rooted to the floor which is just you know a little minor hiccup we made and the annoying little glitch with the sand is sorted out here that's all good although this road is probably going to change because I need it flatter to run a car on it. So those are the cosmetic fixes but the big thing I wanted to come back and look at was the controller support. Even though we had some workarounds and upgrading of OpenTX to sort out radios there were still loads of people that were having problems with all sorts of different radios. People that said that the first three channels worked fine and then for some reason your was on a potentiometer and they couldn't change it. Uh, other people using flight controllers and that was having uh, an issue working. All sorts of controllers just weren't happening and so we needed something to sort it out. So I did that. Um, again, I felt constrained by the Unity engine here. There's no allowances for being able to calibrate joysticks or do anything different with them. So the weird issues I had with people's free sky radios wrapping around, there was nothing in Unity where I could calibrate that. Um, what I'd have to do is go and write my own native plugin in three different OS's and then integrate that back in with the Unity thing which is months of work. So what I ended up doing is actually buying um, in a third party plugin called Rewide which uh, after tax was about $54 which isn't it's not too expensive but this is not a, a sort of money making exercise here this is being given away so I have to thank the rock stars that are my patron supporters just coming down the screen here uh, their support meant I was able to, to buy this and integrate it into the game that said it's a really complicated piece of code it took a long time I don't know how long exactly hours of looking at it and getting confused um, it's very impressive but dare I say it somewhat over engineered so there's so much in the API to go through and try and work out how to do it uh, it took a long time to get there but we got there um, so I'll show you what this looks like now. If we go into our radio uh, joystick setup, things have changed a little bit. Um, you will see on the screen it shows you what joystick you've got. We've got uh, our Free Sky Tyrannus here and if I move the joysticks around you can see everything moving and for some reason my yaw comes out backwards here. So something I've got rid of is the channel mapping. Because I'm not caring about the channel order as such that are coming in now. I just care about how you want your sticks to use. I've got rid of that completely. The other thing I've done is support all modes. Previously we just said mode 1 and mode 2. If you click on the mode button now you can go through 3 uh, and 4. Now let's say we went to, uh, to mode 4, a particularly weird mode. At the moment pitch is there, roll is on there which is the wrong stick, throttle's there. So I'm not actually attempting to move anything around on the screen here I'm just saying if you want to use a different mode just remap your controls so down this part of the screen there's a little button called remap controls now when you press this it will prompt you to move uh, one of the sticks and it will then set that up as the axis so for example we want to go to mode 4 here so if I say remap controls move for pitch which is that one move for roll which is over there now move for throttle which is still there and your is that one and your is reversed there, so you can sort that out. So now we've got your pitch, throttle, roll, rolls reversed. So that works. Similarly, and what I'll do here is I'll actually change radios, and I've changed that back to mode two. Um, if you unplug a radio, you'll see that it, it's detected the fact that the sticks disappeared. 
Now there's no significance for me using this particular radio, it's just what I happen to be using at the time and I wanted to simulate someone who had the wrong channels. So previously I was like the first four axes must be it. So what I did is I set up your on this one on like channel 8 or something. So if we plug this one in, so it's got the fact it's a free sky Tyrannus. So on this one if we move the yaw we've got nothing there. We've got throttle, pitch, roll, roll is moving yaw. And this is because yaw's on a completely different channel. So again if we just remap the controls, move pitch, move roll, move throttle, move yaw, and we've got everything right again. We've got the yaw back, we've got the throttle back, we've got the pitch, and we've got the roll. Uh, as far as calibration goes, weirdly enough, using this new rewired system fixed the issue where we, the sort of sticks were overlapping. But now I've just moved back to this control again because the USB cable is longer so you can see it. So I just wanted to show a situation where let's say we didn't have the full range of the six. Let's say we moved our stick all the way along and it didn't go all the way. To, to emulate this, what I'm going to do is quickly uh, change the weight of that channel. Uh, so if we change that to 50%. So if I now use the your stick, you'll see it only moves about half the way along. So hence the calibrate uh, sticks button. If we calibrate this, what we'll be asked to do is move each of the sticks into its full position up and down. Um, you don't have to worry about like accidentally jigging another stick. As long as you move that stick all the way, you can move it in circles or something. It'll do the calibration and it'll ask, uh, it'll give you five seconds to do that and then centre it. I'll show you what it looks like. So pitch stick up and down, that one. Uh, and when it says centre, basically leave it alone. When it gets to zero, it'll take that centre position. It'll do all the axes at once um, or one after the other. So that's roll, centering stick, throttle, move up and down. Throttle, it won't ask you to centre because we don't care about where the centre point is on the throttle. And then we've got your, move that around, let it centre again. And now you see we can move our your stick and it goes all the way across. Similarly, if you're moving the stick just a little bit and it's all the way across on the screen, you can calibrate and change that around the other way. Easy. So the other advantage of uh, using this rewired plugin is it's easier to support other types of joysticks. So I wanted to make this uh, accessible for people who didn't have an RC radio, but might have something like a, a joypad. This is from a, a PS4. And if we plug this in, then it should say, yep, Sony Dual Stock 4 and the yours back to normal. Uh, I did one extra thing on this one. You'll notice what I thought is because this is a sprung stick and goes back to centre, when you're flying this, so we just go back to fly, you'll, you'll see that if I just let go of the stick, it keeps sort of going upwards because it's uh, slightly over, well, 50% is, is sort of going up. And I thought this might be tricky if people have to sort of pull downwards all the time. So I came up with um, another idea here for the stick type. So I've got this stick type called Gamepad. What Gamepad does is it treats the center point as zero, so you can pull down and nothing happens. And it gives you this half axis to have the whole throttle up and down. That said, what I would actually advise, I was working it out a little earlier and um, I came up with some of my own settings. So I've got an RC, well, first off, I've got a Super 8, where are we? like 0 0.3, an RC Expo of 0.4 and an RC rate of 0 0.5. And uh, what you might want to do is just shift the camera angle down to something reasonable if you're beginning this. So as a sort of start point and then you can see if you just move the throttle up, it's still quite quite interesting, but it it's flyable. It's not it's not as easy as a radio because you just don't have to travel on the sticks. But using this method, I found I could sort of fly around uh, and it would be okay. Obviously, you know, your, your loops and stuff are going to be really slow. But because these sticks are so small, if you up the Super 8, it will be really tough going. So this might be tough, to, you know, whoops, <laughs> not concentrating. So this might be tough to do things like go through the race course or hit the ball easily, but you can at least fly around you can get an idea for what your stick should do. 
um, and you know you can go through the trees it's still pretty flyable I thought uh, not as good as using any sort of radio but still very usable so that's that bit so the final thing I'll talk about is the keyboard mapping now I had it down as a, an idea to let people remap what keys did what because certain people had issues with some of the non-alphanumerics I use like I use the square brackets for the camera angle and the minus and equals keys to do certain aspects and on certain keyboards some foreign keyboards some new Mac keyboards where you have to you know do a option and hold down something for like the equals key to come out it wasn't working for them so I've gone and I've changed everything to an alphanumeric so camera angles now own P all the adjustments for the Super 8 RC Expo and RC Rachel on the numbers um, the gravity and throttle adjuster on numbers so everything should hopefully be findable for you now of course the other important things to say is any uh, mapping adjustments you make on the sticks or calibration data uh, stuff like that that all gets saved um, as soon as you exit the sim it should save stuff uh, and when you go back in it'll all be set up so you won't have to like recalibrate or redo your sticks or things like that and I'm hoping whoops this should fix uh, all the control issues uh, that we had because we had quite a bundle of them um, and should make people's life a hell of a lot easier so I didn't want to do anything uh, other than that on, on this iteration because I really wanted people to make sure they could actually run this because a whole lot of people uh, just couldn't last time because of these issues so uh, fingers crossed that fixes it for you all so that's what's in this update what I'm going to be working on next is a couple of the very obvious bugs the one where if you turn over you can go underneath the, the floor and, and fly around or you can go out of the bounds of the map and fly around I'll sort that out I want to put sound in as well next because it it feels a bit sort of empty and, and quiet uh, and then I get on with the rest of it but um, yeah if you can let me know if there's uh, any other problems you get especially with controllers there is the github repository there is the email address I'll put these all at the bottom there's a patreon link of course um, and you can like subscribe all that gubbins uh, let me know how you get on and I will see you in the next video bye for now well you've made it to the end of the video so thanks once again for watching if you like what you saw then please consider subscribing and if you really like what you saw then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.